everyone welcome back to another video so today we are going to color more leaves in Joanna Bassford's magical jungle I just recently did a video where I shared some color combinations on a page in this book and you all really loved that video and so many people have requested more color combinations so I have an idea for this video and it's going to be a little bit different than the last one the last one we kind of took some color combinations I shared in a previous video that I had suggested would be really great for leaves and so many of you wanted to see a leaf tutorial and see me bring those color combinations to a book. So that's what we did last time. This is the page we are going to be working on. And like I told you guys in the previous video, these leaves up here were all done with Pablo pencils and the bird was done with Pablo pencils. And these leaves here were the leaves that I colored in the last video where I brought the color combinations that I had shared with you to the coloring book and we actually colored these leaves. So today I'm going to bring something a little bit different and I'm going to show you how to color these leaves up here and how to kind of bring some other colors together. We're going to create balance on the page. As you can see this uh, bird here has a lot of oranges and everything in him. This wasn't done with Prismacolors so I just picked some Prismacolors that were kind of along the same color family and we're going to color this leaf up here and I'm going to show you what can happen if you just kind of sporadically lay different colors down on the paper in the areas that you want them or down on your coloring page in the different areas that you want them before you bring all of the colors together and burnish them all in. So this leaf here is when we're done, it's going to look quite different than all the rest of these leaves that you see on the paper because they were all blended in quite a different way. So that's what we're going to do today. And if you enjoy seeing videos like this, please do make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn your bell notifications on. You want to have your bell notifications on because the video to follow this one is going to be most likely my 8,000 subscriber giveaway and it's going to be a really cool giveaway and it's also going to be a tutorial at the same time so you guys don't want to miss that so make sure you are subscribed and if you have your bell notifications on you will be notified when I post that video it should be the one after this video because I'm getting quite a lot of subscribers very very quickly so we should be hitting 8,000 so so soon if you like this video please do give it a thumbs up because that really helps my channel out a lot in the description down below you will find a link to my Facebook group if you would like to join us there you will also find a link to join my email list as well as a link to my patreon if you would like to support me over there so let's go ahead and get into this video I think I have the right angle to color and be able to show you guys what I want to be able to show you. I have a few colors here and you guys know I always share my colors with you at the very beginning of the video and I always tell you I may bring some other colors in and I may not. I don't know. We'll have to see where it goes. But I tell you guys all the time that you, when you're coloring leaves, they don't always have to be green. You can see that I've got a couple greens here. I've got lime peel and this one is Prussian green. So I do have two greens, but the main focus of this leaf is going to be these three colors here. I'm going to use this sand color as my highlight color and then I've got another really bright beautiful color, the Spanish orange. And then just to add some shadowing to this Spanish orange, I'm going to use the poppy red. And my other shadow color is going to be this Prussian green and you guys will see what I do with that. But I used my doll 133. I've got beautiful nice sharp leads. And this is going to be, like I said earlier, a little bit different than the way that I usually show you guys to color leaves. And it's actually going to be really cool. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to just sporadically lay all the colors one at a time in the places that I want them on my leaf. And then I'm going to go in 
after I get all the colors laid where I want them, then I'm going to go in and I'm going to decide where I want a little bit more shadows to be able to create depth. And this area here that is right around the center, I really want to make that really kind of pop off the leaf and create a whole lot of dimension so that this area kind of actually looks like it is a little bit elevated. So follow along and we'll see where we go with this. So the first color I'm going to use is sand. And I really just want to lay the sand in all of these areas. And if you notice, I'm not going all the way to the center. And I kind of really want this sand a little bit of everywhere because the other colors, if you're using Prismacolors, will actually lay right over this color. So you really don't have to worry about that because if you decide you want to lay some other color over the top of it or blend it with another color, they will just lay right on top of one another and actually blend together to change the color. Okay, so I've got quite a bit of that sand laid down. And now I'm going to come in with my Spanish orange and I'm just going to lay this color just kind of, I don't know, sporadically in certain areas. Just anywhere where I feel like it would be pretty once the leaf all comes together. And I'm also reminding myself of where I feel like I'm going to want to put some of that poppy red like out here on the outside edges of each one of these leaves because the poppy red is actually my color that is going to blend in beautifully with this um, Spanish orange. The Spanish orange is actually my transition color or what I like to call my transition color. I have done videos I don't know if I've done one on the Prisma colors, but I've done quite a few videos talking about transition colors and how to choose your transition colors. And that would just be your mid-tone that kind of falls in between your highlight color and your shadowing color. I want a little bit more, I think, on some of these edges. And I think here I'll go all the way to the edge and just put a little bit more pressure on my pencil. Okay, I think I have enough of the Spanish orange, so I'm going to set that one down. Now I'm going to come in with my poppy red. And like I said, I'm just going to kind of look at this and I'm going to say, hmm, where can I add some of this color? Where do I think it will look good? And I'm just going to kind of lay it down in certain places and just kind of blend it in to wherever that... Um, wherever that Spanish orange is because like I said it's going to blend into the Spanish orange the best more so than that sand color because the sand is kind of light I'm putting a little bit more over here doing it a little bit differently. Now remember, every single part of your leaf does not always have to look the same. And I'm not doing this one like, you know, like how sometimes you'll look at a coloring page and you'll be like, oh, well, the light is hitting from over here, so I feel like I should have more of my highlight color here, more of my shadowing color here. I'm doing this one completely different without even putting any thought into that because 
I want to show you that you guys can just lay color onto any object on your coloring page and create something beautiful without worrying about this color needs to go here or that color needs to go there because the light is hitting from this direction and you know so on and so forth because sometimes that can get a little bit overwhelming and we don't want it to be overwhelming right we just want to sit down and color and enjoy ourselves have fun and relax And if you go with a little bit lighter pressure, you will find that it will blend in much better. I have the poppy red laid everywhere that I want it um, for now. And so I'm gonna come in with my lime peel and I'm just going to start adding a little bit of green. So like I told you all before, you don't ever need all of, like you could see here on these leaves, these leaves don't have any green in them at all whatsoever. So what I'm doing by doing this is, if you see over here, you could tell that this uh, bird has lots of orange in it. And then I just kind of have like sporadically light greens and browns and yellows and other colors kind of just laid all through the page so far. And my idea for this page was to, the way it has, um, you know, like these leaves over here and then it has the same leaves exactly over here. I wanna do these leaves identical to these leaves. Then like when I come down here, I wanna do these leaves identical to these leaves. Then when I do the other bird, I want to use the same colors in the bird for this side, but I'm going to change the colors around, but they're still gonna be the same colors. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to bring some of the colors that are in the bird up into my leaf because I want to just kind of create some kind of balance on the page. And so that is my goal here. So after I color this leaf, my whole point of doing or laying all the colors down sporadically is because when I come over here and I do these leaves on either side, I can use the same colors and I could do the same thing on these leaves. And so everything, once it comes together, is just going to look like it is balanced amongst the entire page. So let's go ahead and just, we're gonna just add this line peel in just in certain places. And I'm kind of just looking for, you know, the areas where I've left a lot of white. And I'm just sporadically laying this color in those areas. But look how cool that is. And if you want to, you can kind of come over the other colors like I'm doing down here. And the colors will blend together and create another color. And you could still see that green. And I'm going over where I laid the uh, poppy red. And it kind of just changes the color a little bit, but you could still tell that all those colors are still there. But it kind of made like a yellowish, greenish, like a very different looking color. And so it kind of just adds more color to your leaf. And I kind of want a good amount of green up here at the tip of my leaf. And then I'm gonna bring my green down into this area and a little bit right here. Now let's see how much green we can get on this side of the leaf with our lime peel. 
Now remember, I still have another green, so I don't want to lay too much of this, and I still really want the oranges and the yellows to just really stand out among the green. I really want the yellows and the oranges to really kind of be the more powering color, I guess I would say, on this leaf, rather than the green. Because I would assume when I finish the page, I'm going to have plenty of green in my other leaves. And see here where I'm just kind of blending one color over the other, it creates like a brownish kind of different color. And so that just adds more color, like I said, to my leaf. You could really get creative with this, but look at the difference when I just kind of sporadically lay these colors down. Okay, so it's probably time to come back and start laying another layer down. And this is really going to brighten it up. So we're over here with our poppy red. And remember I um, told you guys about how you could use different varying pressures on your pencil. So like here, I'm going to come down with a much harder pressure because I want it to be much brighter. But over here, I want to not put as much pressure and just kind of leave that one layer there because I want this to be much light, lighter than I do over here. So I've showed you guys in many previous videos that you can completely change the way your objects look by using different pressures with your hand on your pencil. Every single color in your Prismacolor set is not necessarily just one color because you can put heavy pressure behind your pencil and it will be very dark and vibrant. You could leave it like this where it is just much lighter and use just very light pressure. You could just add a little hint of color where you barely touch the page. Or you could do like what I'm doing right here and just kind of going back and forth and just adding a little bit of this color and then pulling it back up. Now see how much pigment I lay just in that one area because I just want that one area to just really stand out. But I still want the green to show. And I'm just very lightly coming around this area here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our, let's do our Spanish orange. And let's come back and kind of pull some of that color into where the Spanish orange originally was. So I'm going to use this motion here. And I'm going to pull this through and I'm going to brighten it up. This Spanish orange is just a very beautiful, very bright color. notice I'm still leaving a little bit of the white of the paper in some of the areas on the leaf 
just because I think that makes such a big difference. This is where we're going to start to kind of see it pop off the page a little bit. I'm going to start adding in some of this Prussian green. And if you watch, you will see that it just really starts to come to life. Now watch what I do. So I'm going to come in just certain places. And because this color is so much darker and there is such a huge contrast between the other colors and the lightest green, it is just going to add quite a bit of depth to our leaf. And because it is so much darker than these other colors, it's going to actually go just right over the top of them. Make sure when you do this though, like I tell you guys all the time, make sure that you have a pretty sharp lead on your pencil. But look at the difference. See how it just kind of is starting to just really pop? I want a lot of extra dark green just right there in that corner. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here is I am going to come, I need to sharpen my pencil so that I can get the right effect here that I'm going for. Okay, it didn't need much sharpening, but that's what my lead looks like now. As you can see, it is pretty sharp, but I want to be able to come right along this line without going outside of the line. Or inside of the line. But this is going to make such a huge difference. And I haven't decided yet what color I want here on the inside. I'm coming back with another layer. And then I'm going to finish over here and do the same thing now see how I'm just adding a lot more of this Prussian green all in this area here because I want it to look a little bit different than the other parts of the leaf. And that's what I mean by just laying your colors sporadically wherever you feel like they just fit. And if I wanted to, I can get another darker green and I can even add to that if I wanted to. And I might do that. We'll see where we go with this. A little bit more in here. And in there. Now let's come back with our line peel and kind of pull out some of that green. And we're just kind of blending that darker green 
into the other colors while also adding more of this lime peel in. But look how all these colors just blend together so beautifully. And this is where I had a lot of that extra lime peel up here in the top part of the leaf. And I just really wanted that to kind of stand out in that area. And I am using a little bit of a harder pressure here. just to get these colors to kind of blend together. And this needs to be pulled through and kind of blended out so that it doesn't look flat. So I'm kind of going over it and then I'm coming this way so that I could pull it out. So this way I don't have a flat line there. You don't ever, ever, ever want flat lines. So now I think I'm gonna come back with my Prussian green and I'm going to just add a few more shadows here just to create even more depth than I already have. So the first time I wasn't putting a lot of pressure behind this pencil, now I'm going to, I guess I would say maybe like medium pressure now. And all this is doing is just creating all that much more depth than we had before. Because I really want the leaf to just kind of go pop off the page. And this is how we do that. When you've got enough contrast between the colors that you're using, that's what creates all that extra depth and just really makes your images stand out. And I like to use colors like this just to kind of line certain areas, like on the outside of the leaf or whatever object I'm coloring, not necessarily just a leaf. adding a little bit extra here just a little bit more at the top Let's come and do the other side now. And then I'm going to come back over here, over this center part, just one more time. And if you can see, I'm kind of twisting my pencil. I like to turn my pencil as I'm going, as my lead, because you guys know the Prismacolors are very soft. So rather than continuing to just keep sharpening your lead, you want to make sure you just continuously twist your pencil. At least that's what I do. Now I'm going to get my lime peel and I'm just going to go over this and kind of pull these colors through and kind of just make this line again not look so flat. 
I'm just really just spreading the pigment around. See how it just kind of spread around right there and fattened up that line? That's the goal. Okay, so now I'm going to come back with my sand, which was my highlight color. And I'm just going to kind of fill this in in certain areas just to kind of brighten things up a little bit. And I'm using it just to go over all the other colors just to bring things together. You know a lot of times some of us just think that white is the only color that you can use for burnishing but that is not necessarily the case because when you use white it actually puts kind of like that white waxy film over your colors and it lightens them up so you have to come back and add the color back in which is what I do a lot of times if I want to use white to burnish with but if you just take your lightest color and you go over those areas again you can just bring all those colors together and do the same thing with your lightest color and it's not going to lighten all your colors up it's just going to kind of pull all your colors together and look how different this leaf looks and all I did was just sporadically just lay colors in the areas I wanted to and then I just kind of pulled them all together and it just has colors all over the place and it looks very different from most leaves like it doesn't look like any other leaf on the page now these areas in here these little lines and stuff I really want those to stand out I think that I'm gonna just straight up color them in dark green maybe hmm Maybe I need a different color here right up in the center. Or maybe I should do... I am going... What am I going to do? I did green all around here to kind of make it stand out. Let me go ahead and just do this first. And see where we go with this. Okay, so I need a darker color here and a darker color here because I really want to make it kind of look like it has a lot of dimension or it's kind of just going like this. And to do that, you would add darker colors on the ends. And then I may have to come back with an eraser and kind of whiten up the center. I don't know, maybe I am going to just be really daring and I'm going to bring my orange to the center instead of making it green since I have green on the outside and I think this is going to make it work so I'm going to do this on the outside here because we have to have some kind of contrast here where I did this outline here to make it just really stand out and create that dimension if I came in here and I did this green then there is going to be no transition between this and this. And I'm going to leave the center really, really light. And then I'm going to come in with my poppy red and I'm going to go right over this. And I'm just kind of using this pulling motion. I may need to get a bit of a darker color, I don't know. I don't know, that looks kind of cool. Let me add a little bit more of my Spanish orange. So that I could pull this poppy red out. And I want this center part just to stay white 
because that is what's going to create the look that I want there. I went and grabbed Crimson Red and I'm hoping that this is going to work and do what I wanted it to do. Oh yes, it is. Look how that just really stands out. That did the trick. And then I think I want to come up here and add just a little bit of this to this area. Oh, how neat. Oh, that is really pretty. Oh, look at all that extra depth that's giving us now. Now see, I didn't know if I was going to be adding another color in. But this is what happens when you start experimenting with your colors. And that's why it's so important to do that. Let me go ahead and fix some of this here. And then I'm thinking, let me go ahead and go over where I added this red here. Since we did the center with our reds and our Spanish orange, I think that these here, we're going to go ahead and maybe make those green. Should we make those green? Maybe they should be red. Yeah, let's make those red. So we're going to go and add a little bit of dimension all around. So I've got my Prussian green. And I'm just making sure that I do the same thing I did with the center of our leaf. Before we come in and add that extra color. Now we're ready to come in and go ahead and add color to that area. So I'm going to start with my crimson red. And I'm going to start on the outside. I'm just going to do the outside of each one of these. And then I think I'm just going to pull the color through.
Okay, so I think that it would look really cool if I used the sand and I just put a little bit of the sand in the center. I added one more color. I've got my Tuscan Red. And I just, I'm looking at this and I just want even more depth. So I'm going to try something here. We're going to see what happens. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to come in on the outsides here. And I want to just kind of darken this up. And yes, it makes quite a bit of difference. Now I'm going to come over here, and I hope you guys can see what I'm doing because my pencil is so small. I was really afraid to bring in this Tuscan Red in the beginning, but I think I make, or I think I made the right decision by doing this. What a difference. Look at all the extra depth that this is creating in this leaf. Look at that. You guys see what happens when you just sit and play and experiment a little bit with color. It makes a dramatic difference. And it takes time. It doesn't just happen or just all come together. You have to actually spend the time and when you think you have added the last layer and you're done, add another one. Look at the difference. Now I'm going to come in with my sand and I'm just going to Blend all of this together. Now you guys know I'm going to probably turn off the camera and I'm going to keep on going because that's just what I do. Because look at this. I discovered this Tuscan Red now. And look at the difference it makes when I just lay a little bit here and there. And this is what I mean when I tell you guys that the difference is all in the contrast of the colors. If your red is dark, but you don't feel like it has enough depth and your object is not just popping off the page and you want to add more, Add more red. Go to a darker red. Go with a red that has a little bit of brown in it. Just so that it creates all that much more depth. But look at the difference. And I'm just kind of adding some more color here and there. And I hope you guys could see what I'm doing because my pencil is so short. So, so short.
But look at the difference that this made just by adding that one last color. But I think it's done and I really love it. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. Let me go ahead and go over the colors one more time so that I know that some of you are taking notes. And I think that's really cool. I've seen some of you come in my Facebook group and you share all the different color combinations or all of the different lessons you're learning in my videos. And I think that is so super cool. So if you're not doing that, maybe you want to get a little notebook and kind of write down some ideas so you don't have to go back and track down old videos. And if there's videos that you're looking for, come into my Facebook group and ask me like, hey, I remember this one video, but I can't find it. And I have no problem linking you to the video or one of my awesome, amazing moderators would be glad to do the same. So I've got uh, Tuscan Red, Prussian Green, Sand, Spanish Orange, Crimson Red, Poppy Red, and Lime Peel. So those are all of our colors. And that is our leaf. And it is so pretty. And as you can see, it looks so different than any other leaf on the page. <laughs> I love, 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 love it. But you guys can see what happens when you just sporadically lay down colors and then just bring them all together and then come back later when you're getting close to finishing it and just adding a little bit more here and there. And I showed you how to um, change the pressures in the amount of pressure you use with your hand to put on the pencil. And it really just brings all of the colors together. Everything that I used in the video will be in the description box below, as always. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Happy coloring. Bye.